What's up folks, welcome back to Broken Ranks. Today we're gonna to be talking about the leveling system and the different ways you can progress in this game. The most important thing to know about Broken Ranks to start with is that it's not an instant gratification game. These days in MMORPGs, you're capable of reaching endgame in about 7 to 14 days, but there used to be games that took months if not longer to progress through, and Broken Ranks is basically a continuation of those types of games. I've researched and read a lot about people's experiences with Pride of Tyron, the 2D predecessor to Broken Ranks and what it's being built off of, and I've seen plenty of people say that it can take you literally a year plus to hit max level, which is level 140. To be honest, I have no idea if I would reach that, but I do know one thing that's for sure, is that Broken Ranks has plenty of content for you to experience along the way. The different ways that we would progress in Broken Ranks would be mob grinding, main quest line and side quest lines, the various jobs we can accept around the world, and a few miscellaneous things such as dynamic events. For the early parts and mid parts of your game, a large portion of your experience is probably going to come from grinding quest lines and jobs. After a certain point, you might have to start farming more mobs and elites, or jobs as opposed to quest lines. But I was reading on the Discord today that there should be quest lines throughout the game, even up till around level 110. One thing I can say about the quest lines in this game is that at times they can be very unique in their own way. I always appreciate when a game is able to make you feel like you're playing a fleshed out single player RPG but within a massively multiplayer world. And Broken Ranks is one that I think captures that to a pretty good degree. There are branching story arcs that you can go down, decisions with consequences or benefits depending on what you choose, and when it comes to the objectives of questline to questline, very often you'll find yourself doing something completely different than you did before. One thing to mention though is that it is a very dark and gritty storyline that we'll be encountering. And an example that I really like that was brought up in Discord one day is how Polish games are known for being very gritty and dark. Some examples given were titles like Gloria Victus, Ancestors Legacy, The Witcher, and This War of Mine, which were all titles that I did play and enjoy quite a bit. But these give you an example of what you'll experience in Broken Ranks. The quest lines, alongside having decent story, are capable of giving you a lot of experience and bonuses. I would say you should prioritize these when you're first starting off, but I would advise against rushing if you don't want to. There's no way any of us are going to reach endgame within the first month, but if that's your playstyle, then go for it. The second priority I would say would be the jobs, also known as the task. These are normally repeatable quest lines you can accept from NPCs that follow the more generic objective systems of MMOs. These are the ones that tell you to go out and hunt 10 goblins or zombies, gather up 20 potatoes, that kind of thing. And the benefit is that you are able to do these in a party or with your friends. And I have to point that out because the main and side quest lines of this game will oftentimes take you into instance locations or put you in an instance scenario. In this game, your questline choices do not affect your party members, meaning that they will also have to go back and make their own choices, more often than not fight their own mobs, and talk to the NPCs themselves. Now the way the party system works is that when you join, you basically become a part of the leader's character, and they can control where everybody moves and goes. So when they're talking to an NPC, if you're in the party you should be close enough to talk to them as well. So that's one way to alleviate not having our quest line choices be connected. There is a reason why they're not, and they say it's because of the branching story arcs. However, in the future, it might be possible for us to at least see the party leader's dialogue because that was a requested feature in the Discord that the game staff said they might look into. The third thing you'll want to prioritize when it comes to leveling your character is mob farming, meaning champions, boss monsters inside dungeons, and regulars, and the random events that might get hosted by either the game masters or the game itself. Realistically, if there's an event going on and it's a decent one, you should probably drop most of what you're doing and focus on that instead. But there might be some changes made when it comes to the events in Broken Ranks as opposed to Pride of Tyrant. When I first jumped into Pride, it was around the end of December and they had a Christmas event going on. You could go to the city of Trentis, the main city, and kill a bunch of NPCs like goblins or orcs with Santa hats I think, and reindeer. This could give you items you could trade in, either to the Santa Claus NPC or the other one they had floating around. During this time I started reading about some of the other events they had in Pride of Tyrone and I found that it seemed to have quite a few. It had the general ones like the chest events or scavenger hunts, experience events of course, happy hour which is very similar, rat races, guild rushes, and my favorite type was the mini events. These are essentially dynamic events that you would see in other games and that's what made me really excited to experience these. I saw ones like the orc, cold, and random invasions, potato beetle event, and even one called the hungry limpos. 
It seems that all of these are capable of giving you good experience and item bonuses if you meet the requirements, so these can absolutely be something to look out for as well. Now of course you can ignore all that and just go at your own pace, but if you're aiming to go as fast as you can, like getting around level 30 in the first day for example, then doing main quest lines, a little bit of grinding, in addition to jobs is probably the way to go. One more thing about jobs is that in Pride of Tyrant at least, they also did have a cooldown so that's where the little bit of grinding would come in. And of course I do plan to jump into all of these aspects much deeper as time goes on, but this is a quick breakdown to showcase what you can expect from the leveling process and how you can get the best foot forward. And with that, thank you very much for watching, have a wonderful night or day, and farewell.